So how do you educate pregnant mothers, nursing mothers on the right form of nutrition for the for themselves, their unborn babies and then the family subsequently? Yes, of course. We always uh, we make use of every opportunity we have with mothers uh, to give them health talks and food demonstration, which is very important. So we also make use of the state nutrition officer. And of course, the local government and nutrition officers, they have done the LGA and of course the OICs. So during the health talk, given during the antenatal, mothers are encouraged, you know, to on proper, they are taught on proper nutrition, especially for pregnancy and of course for their babies. And we always look out for children under five because they are the vulnerable age group. Okay. So we have to demonstrate. We don't just teach them, we do food demonstration. How you can make your, you can enrich, for instance, the pap, you know, the cornmeal. Mm -hmm. We enrich it with ground crayfish oil, which is important, the palm oil for vitamin A. We make sure we, you know, add some soya. We show them how to prepare. Why we do this is because these things are readily available and they are not very expensive. These are things they can buy in the market and prepare at home to make sure the children are nourished. But when we have severely malnourished children, we also have uh, clinics for them. We are very uh, lucky. Uh, we benefited from the um, ready to use therapeutic feeds. We have a lot of them in stock. Okay. So when we find out the child is malnourished, there is a tape we use, the MWAC tape, mid upper arm circumference. We, you know, put it around the and child we and we measure. Okay. So when we find the child is severely malnourished, we place them on the ready to use therapeutic feed. Okay. And that has helped a lot. It's all about what you eat okay. to get the best of nutrients in your body in your system why because because your nutrition is the basis of everything it monitors your well-being your thinking your intellect and then um, uh, ultimately the gdp of the state therefore we take a look at uh, um, wholesomely everything that is eaten by children under five reason we take care of children under five children are that the um, developmental years are when the child is zero to to five years okay. after which no correction can be made on the nutritional status of any child okay. uh, and then the mother pregnant women and all is that is why it is in the primary health care development agency so these children we look at uh, their, their nutritional status if they are we there's a, a measurement that is used the mark tape is used to take measurement to know if the child is healthy or the child is moderately malnourished or the child is acutely malnourished therefore when it is checked um, um, we thank um, the federal ministry of health as well as our governor who has uh, made it possible we have three cement centers in the state where malnourished children have been taken off care of now in Onicha North, in Aoka North and in Ihiala where the 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 uh, the, the status of the malnutrition is very high okay. in those areas. So what are we doing? We are giving children ready to use therapeutic foods. Okay, so these ready to use therapeutic foods are given to a child about um, 100 to 150 sachet okay. and the child will come back to normal. Do you have partnership with other people apart from government to this nutrition? Yes, we have partnership. 
we have partnership with UNICEF. In fact, they trained um, some nutrition officers on the use of this um, ready to use therapeutic feeds. And of course, the Federal Ministry of Health, they gave us a lot of about 10,000 cartons of uh, ready to use therapeutic feeds. So we are doing very well in the area of nutrition. Um, I know that gradually you know, the death rate in um, maternal during black childbirth has significantly reduced. Um, maternal and maternal child health care. You know, what's the agency doing to create more awareness for the enlightenment? Because I know some people still prefer, especially in the rural areas, the traditional midwives. What's the response as major to women? Is the for the yes. We are really very um, happy that we have those low maternal uh, mortality indices because the average woman in Anambra State gives birth in a health center. Okay. You know, so for those ones that you know, for one reason or the other, maybe they live in the hard to reach areas that still patronize the traditional bed attendance, yes. we always uh, pay uh, sensitization visits to the traditional bed attendants, the TBAs. Some of them have even been trained under the Saving One Million Lives programs because we know that they exist. So we have to teach them things about hygiene and what have you. And referral, which is most important. When you see a woman with obstructed labor, please refer. Okay. Don't take on all women. There are some who need care. So I will urge them to refer them to the early, early enough. Okay. So these are some of the things we do. We know they exist. So we know some of those women and we also, you know, go to them, see where they are, advise them on their hygiene. While we also sensitize the women on the need to do the antenatal in the health center and the deliveries in the health center. So that is what we are doing in that. I have a chance to I have a morning in the beginning of that. I have a morning in primary health care. I have a morning in the nurse. I have a morning in the nurse. I have a morning in the nurse. I have a morning in the Let's talk about the Alamo State Health Insurance Scheme now. What role is your agency really doing to ensure that people in the rural community actually benefit from that? Yes, we are providers for the Alamo State Health Insurance Scheme. That, that mean? means our health facilities are going to be used. Okay. Yes, and I'm happy to say that when the um, when the basic health care provision fund comes. All our health facilities are going to be providers for the scheme. Okay. So that way they can assess care and at very minimal cost, okay. if for any cost at all. So that is what we are doing. We, we have uh, credentialed about 63 PHCs for now, those were that were renovated. Yes. And we are still uh, credentialing more to join the scheme. But once the basic health care provision fund comes in, then all the health centers will be able to participate because by then we would use the fund to provide equipment uh -huh. and you know necessary um, you know um, you know renovation of the structure and what have you. So by then all of them will start. But for now we are starting you know, with some of our PHCs okay. that have been credentialed. Okay, so that means basically it would get to the rural areas and everybody everywhere. should be a beneficiary. Yeah. I think our last question would be, so I can let you go to other things, would be, you know, MCI, Integrated Management of Childhood Illnesses. Yeah. What's the synergy? What's your agency doing? And what's the percentage yeah. since you came on board? Yes, yes. yes. Integrated Management of Childhood Illnesses yeah. deals with you know, management of the common ailments we have in children. We're talking of the diarrheal diseases, the pneumonias, the, of course, malaria, uh -huh. you know, the fevers. So what we do, we train health workers. So we have trained 240 health workers on IMCI. We did this training two years ago. Last year, we also did the EPI training for the health workers. You know all the OICs to per facility, so we have the um, the, the charts 
we keep in every facility okay. on diagnosis of these illnesses and at what point they must refer. Okay. So these are some of the things we do for IM, IMCI. Okay. And we do it in, in, in the 21 local government areas and as well. And the statistics is... Yes, right, and it is improving. It's improving, It's right? improving. Of course, during the MSCH week, we do deworming in children. Of course, we do vitamin A supplementation. We do this twice a year. We even go to schools. You know, wherever children are found, playground, we make sure we, you know, make sure that every child is reached. Dr. Choma, thank you so, so, so much for being glad to have this interview. It's been a pleasure having you on our program. And I'm sure now, because of all these tools, us, more people will have an idea what is actually happening in the primary health care center. So thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. I, Dr. Mrs. Chioma Ezenye Molo, am a witness to Governor Willie Obianos giant strides in Anambra State under his able leadership. Anambra State took first position in immunization for the year 2017. We are indeed very grateful for the leadership he provides. With all our hearts, we pray and ask, God bless Anambra, God bless the shining light that we get. We're the only ones to make her brighter, the only ones to make her better, the only ones to make an embrace